In nature, when there's red or yellow, there's odd colors, that means danger, right? Yes. Uh, if you look at this animal, there's nothing dangerous about this animal. But inside of its mouth, it's blue, so that means the animals that would want to eat this guy think that's venomous. Very good. <clears throat> Top of the morning, friends and family. If you watched yesterday, then you'll realize that my operation skills are potentially dwindling into the nothingness realm where I don't know what I'm doing anymore uh, based on a complete lack of sleep. Obviously, I've got somebody sitting next to me here. His name is Mr. Brandon Fowler. If you have not seen Brandon before, well, then you either haven't been watching this channel for very long which is fine. You can have this could be your first video. But there's no problem with that. I've never seen it. Brandon probably does more reptile shows than anybody in the country. It's quite possible. I, I I was gonna say the state, but I think the country might be more accurate, and reaches more people than anybody else physically with reptiles, hands-on experiences, um, all over the place in the state. And has you haven't? How long have you been doing it now? Uh, about ten years. Ten, ten years. That's what I, that's what I was gonna say. So I'm glad that. You confirmed my thoughts. Time. Ten years, and uh, just had one of his bigger shows. You had, what, 600 people in attendance? Yeah, 628. 628 yeah. people in attendance at a show, an educational presentation. Not a, not an expo, like, he just him coming to the show with at his animals at a library. And, damn you, fan. I thought, it, I thought we did do that. I thought we did. Oh, I turned it way down. It's still kicking on. That's un unprecedented. Unprecedented. <laughs> professional <laughs> super professional um did i talk with the morning these folks yes i did but I said, you didn't do the little flippy thing oh yeah we're, not, we're on tripods we're on tripods right now so i'm gonna go with brandon to do a show today but first i want to talk about the fact that brandon is leaving california after 10 years of doing shows around here so I, I'm, I'm gonna stop talking to them i'm gonna start talking to you about okay. stuff perfect <laughs> why are you leaving us so my, my wife and I, we, we kind of came up with this thing. It's a uh, big risk, big reward. Right? Yeah, and, that's, uh, that's a thing. We, we, we want, we, we've always wanted to move. And my daughter was in high school. We weren't willing to take her out of high school and do that. So she's graduated, so it's time to go. And um, kind of a new start. We want to go somewhere else. And I love the Midwest. I love the, the atmosphere, the people. And um, I think it's, we can reach a lot of people that way and kind of grow a little bit more. So. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 time. It's we're a little, a little nervous, a little scared, you know. But um, it's time. So, well, what are what are all we, all these California? I mean, I I know it's not an easy thing to move ever, but no. You have shows lined up over there already. Uh, so, so we're sending out emails. We're getting there. All the you know, our name out there. Um, of course, we have like you know Ryan and Bill. They're helping us out and. Uh, hooking us up with places, so uh, I, th I think we're gonna hit the ground running. And really, do a lot of shows there, a lot more than we do here, which is a lot, you know. Yeah, I mean, you, you, yeah. What do you hit like a thousand shows a year or something? Uh, no, not we're, not we're not quite that. Not that, but we're doing. You know, I know in May I had like almost ninety shows just yeah. in May alone, uh, and we've been pretty much nonstop. So it's 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 been a blessing, man, to to be able to do this and and have as much fun as I get to do and play with animals all day long. So. But uh, this time. Well, it's a huge thing. You guys are going to get to see. Well, if you haven't seen the a previous video with Brandon in it, we went to one of his shows. You're going to get to see just how many people, or not not necessarily how many people, but just like the way, the, the interaction, what what happens. It's the, the hands on. You got something about you that, I don't know. It's tough to talk to a room full of kids. Right. It just is. Like anybody who's ever tried to talk to a room full of 10 kids or 30 kids. I mean, 600 kids. <laughs> It's, it's tough, but you know, one thing, and, and I kind of take my role doing these shows and, and we've come to the point now where <clears throat> people will call and ask for advice or how to get started. And so I've kind of taken my role in this as that guy that's going to help other people do what I do. Cause I want more people doing what I do. I know you're trying to talk me into it this morning. My brain, my brain isn't ready to process stuff like this. So it's going to happen. He's going to do it. See what? And, uh, what I mean, I, I was gonna ask, what are you gonna do with like all these shows that you've done every year? 
I know that you want me to do some of them. I, there's no way I, I, I could not step in and fill your shoes. I don't see that. That's not possible. But but here, here's the thing. I, I, I want someone who is positive. I want someone who will do things the right way, who promote the animals in a correct way, and not as, you know, no dramatics, no nothing silly, man. Because uh, it's about the interaction. It's about people coming up and holding the animals and, and having that experience and touching the animals. Um, and I honestly can't think of anybody better than this guy because he has the attitude, uh, he has the patience, and I, I think he would be amazing to take on roaming reptiles in California and, and really kind of spread what we do because I think it's, it's important. You know? and, and as far as I'm concerned, the education side of this hobby is the most important part of this hobby uh, because we introduce kids to these animals up close and personal and that's a big deal. And it's a big responsibility. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah and I'm, th I'm, I can feel the weight of it right now, and just even just considering. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's. It, I was talking to my wife last night. We were talking about the shows, and there are some people that they treat this like a job, right? They they go to a show, they do their gig, they pack up, and they leave, and there's no emotional involvement, you know. And I think the reason why we grown so much and we do so many shows is I take every show personal. It's a very personal thing for me. I want everybody to have a good time. I don't want them to have those fears. I want them to enjoy it. And you know, when I, when I feel like I have a bad show, I beat myself up, you know, and it's the animals didn't do it. It's me. I had a bad show, you know, and I, I try to promote where the animals are the star. I'm, I'm secondary. I'm just a dude up there talking. The animals are the star, are, are, are the star, and if I feel like I have a bad day, I feel it for a while, you know, and I get close with my shows and the people in my shows. Yeah, you've probably built some relationships over the past decade that most definitely. I, I don't treat anybody like a customer or a client, and uh, I I hate that. I hate it. They're friends. They're family, you know, and. You know, you say friends and family. I, I've always said that because it's, I want people to be comfortable. So I treat them like I've known them forever. You know, and now I have friends, you know, that, that call me, that we've done shows for. You know, and I've done birthday parties for several years in a row for the same kid. You know, because they, they just have fun with the animals, so. And now you're just, now you're just leaving us. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we just started to get to, get to know each other. But, you know, he'll take it over and he'll get those, so. This guy is trying to. How many of y'all would like to do that? See him, see Brian do that. I want I'll leave comments. I want to know. Do you think he'd be good? I think he'd be great at it. So uh, he needs to do it. Damn it, Brandon. <laughs> I, I mean, no I pressure. Would, no, I would want. I I love interacting with kids and, and reptiles, and I I feel like a part of I'm working on it with my own kids. You know, just like learning patience with children, and. It would be fun. I I just have to figure out the time management. But like you said, I guess I can pick and choose, you know, shows and yeah, you make schedule. your own schedule. And and you know, think about one thing that I, that I absolutely love is <clears throat> you'll you'll get a couple animals that are that everybody recognizes, everybody expects to be at these shows, and they're like, "Did you bring midnight? You know, my black and white tegu." That, they that, know. Yeah, that happens even you know. on, on here with like my snake mm -hmm. Junior that's been going under right. you know, treatment for a while. There's always comments on what's happened with Junior, where's Junior yep. at, you know. Yeah. And, and, and you get these people, they have that connection with that one specific animal. And it's like after the show, they are right up at the table. They're like, I want to see Midnight, I want to hold Midnight and, you know, get pictures with her. And, you know, and it, to me, that is one of the most amazing things ever. When you get a kid or even a full-on adult that... They just, they, they can't wait to see this animal and hold it and touch it, you know. Uh, that, that's that's really cool, man. And, and that shows that these animals are really doing a, an amazing job, you know. Uh, I always post it. I I can't give my animals enough credit. They're the hardest working animals in the country. And and they reach more people than, than any of, of animals as far as I'm concerned. And they do an amazing job of what they do. So uh, I'm definitely lucky to have them. Well, we're going to bring you guys to the show so you can kind of see what happens if you missed one of the previous videos. Um, I'll link that video right here, actually, so you can go 
It's, it's this side. I've learned. It's this side. I've got it. There's a little card up here if you're watching on your phone, if you're watching on a uh, computer. You can click on this little eye and it'll drop down and you'll be able to see the other show. There's a, there was a very powerful moment at that show, that last show that I went to film of his. It's very, very powerful. If you missed it, I highly recommend going to check it out. If you like, feel strongly about you know, the bond between reptiles and people and, and all that, there's, there's a moment in this show that you should really see. Maybe we'll have one today, but just in case, <laughs> go see the, one of the more powerful moments I've seen at a reptile show where somebody's presenting animals to people and how it's how it's affecting them. Um, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, yeah. And and I, I, I will say this is over my years of doing this, um, you know, a lot of people have no idea the impact. You know, they say, oh, you, you know, Brandon, you're doing such a great thing with these. It's the audience that makes an impact on me. You know. They're taking time out of their day to come see the animals. They're, you know, parents are taking time off of work to bring their kids. You know, that's a big deal. That is huge for me. And the people I've met, the shows I've done, um, and over the last two months before we announced we were moving, just last week, you know, I was kind of like doing shows and saying goodbye to everybody, and I never really understood the impact until I had teachers and students and parents. I mean, some were like crying. Well, and that's... He's tough on camera, but this guy's gonna go sit in his car and cry later. I am. And I'm gonna make, make you send me a video of it so I can put it up on here, <laughs> use it as a thumbnail, <laughs> and make you look very disparaging. And, uh, and uh, I, I would be doing the disparaging maybe. I don't know how words work sometimes. The older I get, the more of a baby I become. You know, everything, everything makes you cry. But yeah. He cries over a song. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm not supposed to say that out loud. <laughs> it's a good song. It's a good song. It's a good song. Something about beef, something or other. Right? <laughs> I'll link the song down below. If you've got kids, I challenge you to listen to this song when you're not with them. What's it's, the name of it? It's called Butterflies and Beef Stew. Exactly. <laughs> it's down. The link's down there. Go check it out. Listen to it when you're away from your kids. Tell me if you don't cry. If you don't, you have no soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. So, um, yeah. Showtime? Yep, let's do it.